Hey everybody, Greg Kazillo from Kazillo.com. Hey, I had a photographer ask me a, a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was a month ago, I'm not sure, about um, my process when it comes down to editing photos in Photoshop, what color profile I use, as well as what bit depth to use in order to, to maximize their color and get the very best images that they, that they can get out of a print or out of an image that they put up on the web. So here's the process and here's what I recommend for everyone uh, but you know what let me back up a little bit uh, this is your raw file it's a huge amount of data imagine this is a 55 gallon drum of data okay it's filled absolutely to the brim with data and information about the picture that you shot okay it's typically 12 or 14 bit depending upon your camera basically the higher the bit count the more gradations there are in between each color that's basically what's going on when you have a uh, color inside of a picture. It's it's a gradation typically from one color to the next, um, you know, from red to green or whatever, or from one shade of green to the next. The more uh, kind of lines and the more bits you have and the more pieces in that in that scale that's in there, uh, the the better your photo is going to look and the more possibilities and the the better color you're going to get out of it basically. So. We're at 14 bit in this file. That's what I typically shoot out of my camera. So uh, this is our raw file. Now, the next step is to take that and pour all of that data like that. <laughs> take all, pour all that data just like that into our PSD file. Now, our PSD file is a 16 bit Pro Photo RGB, which is the color space image. Now. PSD file is will hold all the data or just about all the data out of that raw okay 16 bit that's the default it is a little bit bigger than the 14 but that's good because the PSD could actually hold uh, a little bit more than the 12 to 14 that we have here so that's exactly what we want then we have the pro photo color space it's a huge color space saves all the just about all the information I'm going to show you a graphic from Wikipedia here in a second all right. Last step would be this JPEG file that we would then take this PSD and, and we would pour it over into that JPEG. Now, as you could imagine, since we have 55 gallons here and maybe only a gallon here, it's going to be a lot less and it's going to overflow. It's not all going to fit inside of this JPEG file, which is only 8 bit which uh, you should be tagging with sRGB color space, and again, I'll go over that in a second, as well as uh, having lossy compression. What is lossy compression? That means that you're actually losing data every time that you save a JPEG. So if you are working in Photoshop on a photo, and it's on, you're saving it as a JPEG, and you save it 10 times, over time, you could actually have more data loss in that file because you keep on saving it and compressing it and compressing it and compressing it and losing that data. That's why I suggest definitely editing in a PSD file and then you're in the long run you'll end up with a completely full bucket over here in the JPEG. Instead, and the, the, the opposite side of this is that we would start off with just the JPEG down here. Let me zoom in. We would start off with just this JPEG file down here. Okay? And then we would end it would start off full to the brim but then we would be pouring data out because like I said we're actually losing information we're losing data as we're editing that's what uh, Photoshop and Lightroom you're losing data all the edits that you do so if you start off with just with that smaller one gallon JPEG container and you start pouring it out you're not gonna have anywhere near as much color information or as quality of a picture if as if you would have started off with a much bigger container from the raw over to the PSD and then to the JPEG versus either shooting JPEG in camera and then editing those or shooting uh, or just going from raw right to JPEG and then edit the JPEG in Photoshop so um, for some images you can probably get away with just editing that you know that JPEG in Photoshop especially if it's just a a one-time thing and it's it's not really a big deal but if you really want to maximize your color this is the way that you want to go raw PSD and then JPEG alright so I promise you a little uh, thing on color space this is how color space works thank you Wikipedia now 
let's talk about this and I'll uh, show you how this works. You have this horseshoe shape of visual color. Okay, so you have this outside portion here, the shaded ver portion of this drawing. That's the part that we can actually see as humans, you know, the visible light, the light that we can actually see that our brains react to and can, can physically pick up. Okay, now our photos and our cameras can't pick up all of that and can't capture all of that, but they're getting really close and they're getting, they're getting better and better every single day, every single few months, few months you know, Nikon and Canon and Sony and everybody else is coming out with a new camera, a new piece of equipment that, that gets better and better. So we have this big triangle right here is Profoto RGB, all right? And that means that it's capturing almost all of the visible light that, that um, the camera has captured, and it's, it's keeping it in a much, again, a much larger container, be able to save more of that data, more gradations from one color to another. As you see, we have blue over here, and it gradates way over here to red, and that's exactly what we want. Um, here to here so it goes from blue and then you know pink and pink and pink and pink and then it over to red and then from red all right and then yellow 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 and end up up into the green all right so bigger container now Adobe RGB is a little bit smaller container it's not gonna hold all the data that a pro photo can you're dumping some of it out you're losing some of that information now sRGB is the same way you're losing even more information okay sRGB is perfect for the web. Um, it, my lab, Miller's Professional Imaging, they want all of their images to be tagged with sRGB. If they're not tagged with sRGB, they will reprocess them to make sure that they are tagged with sRGB. So you might as well tag them the right way in the first place. So, how does that process work? Well, let's talk real world scenarios here and real world uh, kind of steps from one place to another. Now I had this cool photo that I took last year in Las Vegas of this bike. Now say I wanted to edit the frame here, clean up these little dings and stuff. I might be able to do it in Lightroom but it'd be so much quicker and easier just to do it in Photoshop. So say I wanted to clean all that stuff up all right, and say I might also get ambitious and I want to clean up this fender right here. There's a lot of water spots on there, but I could probably do it if I took my time and, you know, edited each one of those spots out and lines out and stuff. I could probably do it. So, a couple ways we can take it from Lightroom over to Photoshop. Now, I have already edited this photo. It is ready to go, so I've already done all my develop settings and changes and contrast and all that stuff. So, it's pretty much final as far as Lightroom is concerned. Now, you can do um, edit in... Uh, control E which is edit in which will process a file according to your preferences alright and here you go now my preferences if I was to use that would be PSD Profoto RGB and 16 bits by the way Lightroom defaults to Profoto as its internal quote unquote color space so you might as well keep on working with it all right, so PSD, Profoto RGB, 16 bits is my default. If I would just hit Alt-E, uh, edit in Photoshop, or where is it, um, edit in, there you go, Photoshop. But as I mentioned before in a, in a previous video, I prefer to have a little bit more control over the size of the image. A lot of times I like to up the image a little bit right out of Photoshop so to have a little bit more data just in case if I if I ever needed for a billboard or something I might as well not edit this twice if I don't need to so I'm gonna bring up my edit my sorry my export dialog box by the way that can that uh, shortcut is control shift and E uh, you can obviously also hit this export button or go to file and export now I have a preset set 5000 pixels 16-bit PSD save the same folder as original, which is where I want it exported. Yes, I want it added to my catalog because this is now turning into my new master file instead of my raw. The raw is going to be the untouched original. Then this one is going to be my master that I would always export from if I need it. Format PSD, color space, pro photo, bit depth, 16 bits. Um, this is still checked. I don't know why it shouldn't be. Uh, probably because they added that in this uh, version. 
Resize to fit 5,000 pixels is good. Width and height 240. I'm not sharpening at this point. And ex after export, do nothing. So let's export this. And uh, there we go. There's my exported PSD file. So now I'm going to edit this file and bring it over into Photoshop. And I can do my editing. Now I'm not going to sit here and bore you. In fact, that one's more difficult. But just so that we can tell the difference, let's go over a quick clone stamp. Probably even use the, uh, the one of the other tools, but this works perfect. So we'll get rid of these couple of spots real quick, so that we know the difference. Okay, saved. All right. So what do we have here? We have a 16-bit. Pro Photo, as you can see right down here, Pro Photo RGB file. It's going to save as much data as possible in a single in the single file. All right, we're going to close. We're going to go back to Lightroom, and we can see that those changes were made. Uh, those couple of little spots are gone uh, as compared to the other one. Let's bring them both in here together. There we go. And as you see, there were a couple of changes made. So we know that that is the right file. So now we're going to finally export out to the web or out to print. So we'll bring up our export dialog box and we will choose say 4000 pixel JPEG. All right, same folder as original JPEG file quality up to you how you want to set it. If I'm sending something out for print, I leave it at 100% because I want minimum compression. Um, SRGB color space is the color space that we want for any kind of print unless you have a high-end printer and you already know what you're doing as far as your color spaces and you have a calibrated printer or all that stuff um, you want to be just working with srgb and sending them out and get it, getting them done uh, i don't print anything in house i find it uh, not necessarily a waste of time but it's not something that i want to spend my time on i would much rather send them away to millers have them back to me you know in a day on my doorstep and it makes it so much easier for me to just just use them rather than trying to print in house and uh, you know deal with the printer and the inks and the cost and you know all those things. It's just a better process for me and better workflow for me. Uh, resize if you want to resize it. And finally, we're going to sharpen it with the default sharpening settings. Now you can add some more sharpening if you want to inside of uh, either Photoshop or inside of Lightroom there is that sharpening and develop in the develop panel um, I find that for my images this sharpened this output sharpening is perfect it works really well it's it's just enough whether I'm talking for print or for web you know it, it's just enough it's the right amount and you do need to apply sharpening to every image that's exported it's just raw files need sharpening no matter what in in the process uh, so this is the way you want to go uh, the matte paper and standard or if you're talking about a web image you'll use screen and standard or if it needs a little bit more and you know what this image might even might, maybe could use a little bit higher um, but for portraits I'm definitely not a fan of um, you know what that JPEG file didn't add <laughs> I did I forgot to check uh, add the catalog uh, I'm not a fan of, of over sharpening portraits that's why a lot of time I'll just go with that standard it's it's just enough and it's the right amount so questions comments concerns did I miss something let's hear it uh, by the way you guys can check out the new forum that's up on the website kazillo.com slash forum it's up it's running people are commenting it's blowing up it's doing really well so hope to see you there Greg Kazillo kazillo.com keep shooting